defensive orchestra that is not there? It is definitely a process. Um, and the reality is there's a lot of guys playing this year and playing minutes that they haven't played before. And when that happens, you have to grow together. As a matter of fact, I am not taking far away from them. They have to get better. And that's what we require as an organization in the win. And we have to get better and live up to who we are supposed to be. The Golden State Warriors find themselves in a very weird situation. How their season started before one game was even played is actually a good representation of how their season has been going so far. Draymond punches Jordan Poole, the video leaks, brings all this unnecessary drama to a championship team, and then a few days later, they sign Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins on great manageable deals. It's like bad news countered by pretty great news, so you have to find that in between. And thus far, that's how the Warriors season has been going. They're six and eight right now, yet they still have one of the best net positive starting lineups in basketball. And Stephen Curry is having very comparable numbers to his MVP year. Right now, the Warriors have yet to win on the road. They're 0-7. Last year, with little to no continuity with a lot of their best players, they were three games above 500. And that was with Steph missing 18 games, Draymond missing a good portion of the season, Clay missing a lot of games. Steph, Clay, and Draymond only played like a game and a half together, yet they were still three games above 500. This year, they've yet to win on the road. And it's not like they've played a brutal road schedule. Three of their losses on the road have been against the three literal worst teams in the East right now. This is a team that in their glory days used to win 70% of their games on the road. So this is extremely abnormal. It's crazy because one of their biggest problems is actually something that I used to attribute as a big positive, the mix of young, raw, inexperienced talent combined with their win-now veteran star players. James Wiseman has been a massive disappointment all across the board, and I don't even know if it's exactly his fault. This man got drafted as a second pick playing 69 minutes at Memphis. He only played 69 minutes of college basketball, and he was the second pick. Honestly, in the last three to four calendar years, he just hasn't played enough competitive basketball to stick him in such a mature, fluent offense like Golden State that requires high IQ. I like what Kevon Looney just said because it's true. He said Golden State relies heavy on spacing, cutting, and being on the court with a bunch of all-stars, and you have to know where to be. Wiseman is not even close to being there yet. Right now, James Wiseman at 21 years old, fresh off an injury all last year, he has the lowest plus minus on Golden State by far. I find it very interesting because you know who has the highest plus minus? The player that is playing his position, Kevon Looney. Clearly, Wiseman is supposed to have a much bigger upside, but IQ wise, especially in that system, he's just not there yet. Also in 2019, when Golden State had that tank year, what made Wiseman seem like a no brainer fit as he fell into their lap is Golden State always struggled with size. I don't know if they've ever necessarily needed that dominant ball stopper, Joel Embiid type of big with how they're built, but having one that fit within their system would have obviously been a luxury, and that's what James Wiseman was supposed to be. James Wiseman has been the complete opposite of that. He's seven foot, so if anything, you would want him to help the team dominate the glass. Literally all of their lowest rebound percentage lineups include James Wiseman, and he's the tallest on their team. I remember Draymond Green said this on JJ Reddick's podcast about young prospects. And even though I know he wasn't talking about Wiseman, or so I think, in 2020 hindsight, his comments are very applicable to James Wiseman. Because you have these talent evaluators who think, oh man, this guy has potential. He can jump out the gym. Uh, look at his body. He can move this way. Uh, he looks like he's going to be this. But all potential means you haven't proven shit. And that's what we drive nowadays. Like the, the number one pick is going to have the most possible upside. The number one pick is never the guy who's done the most. Also with Golden State right now, Steve Kerr has to figure out exactly what he wants to do with their lineups, and I believe he can do it, but he will have to sacrifice some egos. Klay Thompson is just not the same guy, and I believe subconsciously he knows it, and that's why he responds to everybody that says anything about him, because he's insecure about his game because those injuries have affected him. We know what made Klay so great in his glory days was not only his ability to get as hot as anybody ever, but also his on-ball and team defense that he provided for that team. 
Look at how far back Klay Thompson is from chasing Malik Monk with absolutely no contact on that screen. That's not Klay Thompson. I don't even buy heavily into defensive analytics, but if you do, Klay Thompson's numbers are at the bottom of the team as far as defensive box plus minus. And the guys at the top, Kavon, Draymond, and Steph, he shares a lot of minutes with them. So I, I find that very alarming. So that begs the question, even though Jordan Poole isn't great defensively, should Jordan Poole actually be starting over Klay Thompson? Even though he's not much of an improvement defensively, he definitely does provide a lot more spark offensively for sure. Excluding that San Antonio game, which I will get into, Jordan Poole has been struggling and last year he played so great with a lot of the vets. I heard Steve Kerr say this after one of their games and I completely agree. Last year he thrived beside Steph, beside Draymond Green and Kevon Looney because he had way easier looks, way cleaner looks and he played in the mix of their offense, not being the center focus of their offense like he has been this year. Now you put him on the bench and essentially ask him to carry the young unit and it really hasn't worked. I told you James Wiseman has the lowest plus minus on the team. Well, second lowest is Jordan Poole. And a lot of that is because he plays so many minutes with James Wiseman. Jordan Poole and James Wiseman has played 100 minutes together this season. As a duo, they have the worst net rating of any combination on their team. A lot of that is the new attention that he gets without Steph, Clay, Wiggins, and Draymond. Three of the best games he's had this season, especially the one that he just played against San Antonio, has been the games that he started. Last year, when he was like the unexpected blossoming gem, he was a part of their best lineup, which included Steph, Looney, Wiggins, and Clay. Before the season started, it was very easy to look on paper and say, damn, Golden State has the perfect mix of young, raw, high draft pick talent for their future mixed with their star veteran win now players. But when you really put it together, it's a tough mix and it's making Steve Kerr really earn his paycheck. I find it very interesting that the three teams that all commit the most turnovers per game are like the three youngest teams in the league with 19 through 23 year olds in their starting lineups. And then you look at Golden State, who's up there with the top worst teams. And if you look at bench turnovers per game, Golden State is dead last. So they're adding a lot to that. Obviously, Golden State has a lot of those young high draft picks with potentially a lot of potential in them. But in order for them to maximize that, they have to play and go through those growing pains. And unfortunately, where Golden State is right now as a championship contender and a championship team, they don't have time for growing pains. So I want to leave you guys with a question specifically for Golden State Warriors fans. If you were Bob Myers, would you consider moving some of those young pieces for better fits for the ultimate goal right now? Or would you preserve that future and ride it out with the young guys, possibly for something special in the future? Me personally, if I have a top 10 player on my franchise and I never know if I'm gonna ever get that again, I'm trying to maximize Steph's window. That's just me. If you guys like this video, like this video. Um, Comment in the comment section, what exactly would you guys do if you were Bob Myers? You heard my input and I wanna hear y'all's. Uh, follow my social media sites, turn on post notifications, do all that great stuff guys, and until next time as always, Stay tuned.